Hello and welcome, my name is Parky and today we're playing some more Plague Inc. Evolved. This time, the official scenario we're going to be taking a look into is the Unknown Origin scenario. Everyone has a favourite country, unfortunately you don't get to choose it here, are you feeling lucky? So basically I think this one is it's going to choose the country for you, frankly. So I've not played this at all and we can pretty much choose all of these, apart from the two that we haven't unlocked yet. But, I think I'm just going to go for Bacteria, because I have not actually played a Bacteria for bloody ages. And I think it sounds like good fun. So we're going to go for the ATB boost again, and we're also going to go for Aquasite, because these are my two new favourites. Right, so we're going to be playing this on normal as well. And this time, we're going to call it Sweaty Bum. Welcome to the unknown origin scenario. You're a new bacteria. To win, you must evolve and spread across the world, wiping out all humans in the ultimate plague. Start country pre-selected. Your disease will infect patient zero in a randomly selected country. Oh wow, okay, so we've actually got Libya, which is not the worst one to start in in the world, so we can just go for that now. I think aside from this, it's a pretty similar playthrough as to just like the normal game, but this time, just because normally I go for like the transmissions and the abilities first, I'm going to go for the symptoms, because symptoms are normally quite fun. I think I'm going to go for the nausea one first, and then maybe go for... Should we go for some cysts? Where are they? Cysts. Yeah, so we want to get that infectivity up as much as we can. Also rash. Let's just, you know, let's just do a nice spread to begin with. And then maybe we'll go for something like, I don't know, abscesses, because that's going to increase the infectivity massively. And obviously playing it this way around is going to make it a lot more obvious that the disease is infecting people. That might be an issue in terms of research speed, but we can put a few more points into genetic reshuffles. Of course, with it being a bacteria and everything, we should get quite a few points from uh, infecting new people, which is going to help everything. Okay, so what do we want now? Let's go for abscesses. Yeah, sure. Okay, then. And then after that, I think we might go for, like, the sneezing and coughing, because that seems like a pretty standard one. We need eight DNA points for that, so we can just go ahead and do that when we've got that. Okay, which is right now. So let's go for that. Coughing. And then we could actually go for sweating, but I feel as though maybe sneezing would be more useful to begin with. So we need 10 more DNA points. A group of Ritters, unsatisfied with their working conditions, have put forward a motion to require readers subscribe to a paywall community fully supportive. I don't think that's particularly related or relevant to our cause, but you know, it's okay. It's nice to know what's going on in the world. Who study shows world's obesity epidemic? Something. Increasing. <laughs> that's probably true. Okay, we can put pneumonia down, but I think sneezing is going to be a bit easier. Sweaty bum spreads to Egypt. Fantastic. Egypt is one of the best ones that you can go for. I'm going to go for that, and then maybe the sweating, so we need nine more DNA points. Fantastic, we've already got that. So they're going to get that, and then probably, should we go for... I, I think I remember skin lesions being quite good. Because, yeah, look, they, they increase the severity and the infectivity massively, but not the lethality. So we're going to go for skin lesions, so that's 15 points. So hopefully now that we've got Egypt, Egypt is a very good one because it has lots of ports and it also has a lot of airports, which is going to make it very good for spreading to other countries. And if we can get this spreading into most of Africa and Southern America, it's going to be very helpful. Because as a bacteria, you are slightly more uh, happy to be in a hot environment. Although I'm not sure bacteria actually have any form of emotion, but you get what I'm trying to say. Sweaty bum infecting more countries. So we've got most of North Africa now, which is very helpful. Hopefully we'll start spreading into mainland Europe and Asia at some point, via Saudi Arabia and the Middle East. But now we've got enough points for this, we'll go for skin lesions. Hopefully this should encourage the growth of more bacteria, as open skin lesions in a hot country where it's humid is not going to be very good for bacteria. Well, it's going to be very good for bacteria, not very good for the host, though. Okay, the disease has been identified, though, so hopefully they're not going to be too quick on the mark of starting the uh, treatment or research into the treatment. But who knows? We might be lucky, we might not be. So next, I think we probably want to go for... we could go for pneumonia. Cold climates, especially vulnerable. Might be good, just to sort of encouraging it up into the northern areas of Europe and North America. Sounds like a good plan to me overall. We're probably going to get that at some point anyway. And as we're not a virus or anything like that, the chance that we're going to randomly mutate is quite low. Libya has now started working on a cure. Hopefully, just because it's Libya right now, it won't progress too much. But I think next, what do we want? We probably could go for something like... Well, where, what have we got here? Pomeria edema? Respiratory system into the air? pathogen into the air from the respiratory system. That seems good. It's got quite a high infectivity, but it does start increasing the lethality, but I think we're going to go for it. 
Oh dear, the UK's been infected again. What a shame. We're all going to die. So let's go for this, and then I suppose... Should we go for diarrhea? Potentially lethal dehydration, poor countries versus vulnerable. It increases the infectivity quite a lot in comparison to lethality, so I think again we might do that. Airplanes starting to use new sterilization air filters. Damn it, so they're actually going to make it a lot harder for us to spread via airplanes, which is not helpful. So we need 16 points for the diarrhea. It's now more infectious than HIV, but that's okay. It's actually very good indeed. It's more than okay. Medicine in the USA slowing infection. So because the USA has advanced medicine, even though they make it incredibly hard for anyone to actually use the medicine because it's so bloody expensive, completely different point though, it's going to slow things down with the bacteria. Okay, sweaty bum. That is something you don't want in a hot country. So now we've got diarrhea, I think what we're going to go for is maybe a bit of the normal transmission. Let's go for water one, because my logic and reasoning here is that if aeroplanes are going to be harder to spread by, maybe we can go for ships instead, as we are still quite sort of retained to the main ma land mass of Africa right now, which is not very helpful. So let's go for water two as well, and should we go for blood? Because then we get a higher mutation chance, having said that. Bacteria haven't got the ability to mutate that often, so there might be useful ability to have this. Possibly. And it's going to increase the infectivity as well, which is always very helpful. I think we'll go for blood. Blood seems good. Scientists have had a breakthrough in their understanding of inflammation and will be able to cure diseases with it more easily. God damn it, scientists. Why are you doing things properly? Okay, we're going to go for blood too as well, so let's do that right now. Then after this, should we go for colds just to encourage it up north? Even if, even if we just do cold one? Maybe drug resistance one as well, just to increase the ability of infectiousness in the richer countries with better healthcare. I think that sounds okay. And then maybe we'll go for cold two. I'm not really sure. How am I feeling? Yeah, cold two, fine. Okay, and then after this, let's go for... Should we go for another symptom? I feel as though maybe we should go for another symptom. Go for immune suppression. Greater chance of mutation, which would obviously help save us a bit of money. Could go for necrosis which is going to make it very lethal, but very infectious and quite severe. Seems like fun. Let's get 38 DNA points. It shouldn't take us too long. We only need two more points. There we go. Necrosis. Now, this is unfortunately going to kill off people a bit more quickly, but I think I always, in the past, worry a bit too much about people dying off. So this time I'm just going to like go with the flow, as it were. Try and, you know, just kill off a few people, but worry about the infectivity more. I think as long as the infectivity is higher than the severity and lethality, you're still fine, and you're going to infect people faster than people are dying. So that might be a thing. Okay, and then after this, I feel as though we might as well go for drug resistance too, or maybe even cold too. I feel like we could go for cold too. Sweaty Bum is now on the Who Watch list. How terrifying. Okay, what do we want here? We've got cold too already, so I don't know why I thought we didn't. Could go for a drug resistance, that's going to take 28 points. We've actually just instantly got, so there we go. Drug resistance too. Perfect. Now we're going to go back to some of these symptoms. Should we go for dysentery? Dysentery might be fun. Go for a bit of uh, horrific other stuff though first. Let's go for pulmonary fibrosis because that's going to basically cause people to cough a bit more. Rich regions are particularly vulnerable. That would help in Europe and stuff like that. Would be good. Would be very good indeed. And then after that, maybe we could go for dysentery because dysentery is always fun. Dehydration, starvation, and death is going to increase the lethality, but again, the infectivity is so large, maybe we don't need to worry too much. And hopefully this is going to start spreading very rapidly now across borders. And actually, if you have a little look, we're starting to infect lots of countries that we haven't gone into yet, which is fantastic. We've got loads of points. Let's go straight for dysentery. Then after that, maybe we could go for insomnia. I mean, we've gone for most of these things already. It's going to cost us 17 but it's going to make people less productive, which means that research might slow down. Got the anemia symptom now as well, not that that's going to be particularly useful. People are dying very fast, they're dying faster than people are actually being infected. Now it might be due to the fact that maybe we haven't spread into every country yet. The cure is at 25% though. So let's go for insomnia, because that's going to slow down people's ability to cure this. There may be paranoia as well, less likely to seek treatment and cooperate with others, so that's going to cost 20. Now, of course, we could go for maybe some genetic reshuffles, and in fact, we've got a lot of points now. So let's go for paranoia, then we could go for seizures, and should we go for insanity? Let's go for insanity, because that seems good. Emotional and behavioural abnormalities, significantly harder to cure. Sounds good to me. Australia is breaking down, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, it seems quite good. Pakistan and some other places have started shutting down their land borders, which isn't going to help. We're in pretty much every country now. Researchers are at 33% for the cure. 
which is okay. We can now probably afford the next thing. Then what do we want here? We go for paralysis. Significantly harder to cure and can be lethal. And then maybe coma. Coma might be good because it's not going to kill people, but it will slow down the ability to cure this. Now, unfortunately, we're struggling to get into these countries. We've actually just gone into Mexico, but Canada is rolling over very quickly, which is fantastic. Also, yeah, okay, I think we're fine, to be honest. We've gone into every single country now. It's going to make it fairly easy. We're going to go for coma. And then after this, I think we're just going to wait until everyone's infected because then once we've done that, oops, symptom combo. <laughs> Sneezing and diarrhea are causing unwanted accidents, lowering productivity and drawing attention to sweaty bum. Gonna have more than a sweaty bum at this rate. Oh my god, New Zealand, seriously? For God's sake, New Zealand, why do you keep doing this to me? This is actually kind of irritating. It's like the one island in the whole bloody world that keeps doing this. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. I'm just gonna cry in a corner for ten minutes because New Zealand keeps screwing me over. It seems like complete luck whether you get into New Zealand or not. But at this point in the time, we might as well just accept that we've lost this playthrough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it again and see if I can win. Okay, so I've played again, and this time... Oh dear god. Okay, this time what's happened is um, I've done it a completely different way. Uh, I just put everything into these, and just two cold, one hot, and two of these. And that was literally it, and I've infected everyone, so now I just need to kill everyone. So let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to go straight for total organ failure and coma. And also, systematic infection would probably be quite good. We can devolve all of these now as everyone is infected. I think the problem I made was that, unfortunately, for the country that it randomly selected for me, it meant that basically I only had the harbour and land to actually spread my disease, which obviously made it a bit more difficult. So what we could do is now go for something like tumours. We could also go, also go for immune suppression. That might be quite useful. But yeah, hopefully this will start killing people off and the research won't get there too quickly. If I fail at this, then I will admit I'm a complete buffoon and I'm just stupid. So I deserve to lose. But whatever, we're just going to go and see if this works now. We should get a few more points for actually killing people off as well. So we can put some more points into some deadly side effects. So there we go. It's going to randomly mutate and involve some other symptoms as well, so hopefully this should be okay. Research is going up quite quickly though, but we are killing people off at a really high rate, so I'm not too concerned whatsoever. Unfortunately, with the basics like a bacterial infection, I think the best is just to stick with silent but deadly. So basically infect everyone first and then start killing them, because frankly, if you try and do it another way, it's not going to work very well. So we'll go for this, and we'll also go for paralysis and up this route as well, because that'll start slowing down research even more, and everyone's just going to die off in a horrific manner, which is always very fun. <laughs> So there we go. This stage has been completed. Unfortunately, I didn't do it very quickly, but I've not really been going for the biohazard uh, sort of symbols. I don't really care if I get two out of three or one out of three, as long as I finish it. Fantastic! Parkimite has destroyed the world despite the world's best efforts. The last few humans die lying in holes with no chance of survival. Poor humans. Totally don't feel bad at all, and the last few of them will go insane because they're covered in their own defecant. Perfect. Parkimite has successfully eliminated all life on Earth. Yay! Did it in 813 days. We only got one biohazard star, but to be honest, I'm fine with that. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave your support in the comment section below. Also, leave ratings and subscribe if you ready. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, awkward, awkward goodbye. Awkward.